At this point, I'm pretty sure I can say that everyone has watched at least one property or story that they've loved in their lifetime die. I mean, for me personally, I've gone through that with Star Wars, with Doctor Who, and with DC. There are characters and entire universes that I used to engross myself in that I now feel apathetic towards or just outright loathe. But to this date, none has stung me more than the pretty much intentional destruction of one of, no, scratch that, of my favorite fictional character ever created, Batman. The blatant disrespect to the character is just something else. Being as Batman is one of the most iconic and popular superheroes, you would think that DC would be more protective of their property, especially since they're looking down the barrel of massive financial issues due to their attachment to Warner Bros. But no, that's not the case. From a largely failure-stained movie franchise that never capitalized on a superhero trend, to writers who seem to care nothing for the characters they're working with and only seek to use them as a platform for their own agenda, the DC brand is kind of dying out. However, in spite of all of the bad stuff that the company has been putting out, there still was one good property attached to their name that I loved. The Arkhamverse. For those not familiar, this is the umbrella term used to cover the three Batman titles that became some of the most beloved superhero games to ever hit the market. And for me, it was a particularly fantastic event. It was around 2015 when I bought my PlayStation 4, the, the bundled version that came with Batman Arkham Knight, and that was my introduction to these games, and it was something that I found I really loved. The best part of it was that the voice of this version of Batman was the same as the one from the cartoons I loved years prior when the DCAU was in its heyday, Kevin Conroy. I think it's a pretty well accepted fact that both of Kevin's Batman portrayals are some of the best, most loved renditions of the character outside the comics. I mean, from being part of the best bit of on-screen DC story work in the form of Justice League and Batman the Animated Series, to helping create the greatest experience of being Batman, Conroy became synonymous with the voice of Batman. And of course, all of this builds to a crescendo with the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League game recently released by Rocksteady. Set in the very Arkhamverse that everyone loved, and produced by the same company that had made those legendary Batman titles it was attached to, the game was virtually a layup to be made. And one of the remaining long shot paths for DC to actually pull itself out of the gutter. Unfortunately, that didn't go well for anyone involved in it. Kevin Conroy unfortunately passed away after voicing his part in the game, but before the game was released. This meant that Conroy's final performance would be the end of the character that made all these games possible. The idea of Batman going out with the man who pretty much became synonymous with his voice isn't inherently a bad idea, if it had been a pleasing final act. But leaks began to surface about the way that the legendary hero was taken out of the game, unceremoniously executed by a headshot from Harley Quinn. And never mind that this version of Batman has regularly dealt with leagues of villains taking over entire areas and working against him. A small band of, well, laughable characters takes him out. And of all the characters in this version of the Justice League least likely to fall victim to brainwashing, Batman would have been the one. He goes out in an inglorious way, one where he dies an unredeemed villain, unmourned by anyone. Are you really telling me that you couldn't have sent him out by having him do one last good thing and saving the day? Are you telling me Kevin Conroy's last performance had to be a villain Batman to the end? But things only got worse from there. More leaks alleged that character dossiers could be seen basting Wonder Woman with all kinds of praise from characters who would have no way ever said such things while everyone else is treated like a joke. It only added insult to injury as more and more people caught on. Not to mention the devs talking about how they planned to bring the Joker back into the universe. But then it came to launch day and it proved that the game had even more rage to generate. Upon early release, players experienced a glitch in which the game would instantly complete the story mode, 
robbing them of the scant content that was actually available in the game, searches for how to return the game surged 791% as players began to bail on the game mere hours after its early access launch. And from there, player numbers fell through the floor, with the game experiencing roughly half the number of players as Marvel's Avengers. And in the end of the game, you can find a tribute to Kevin Conroy, one of Lois Lane reading a note left behind by Batman, with no mention of Kevin Conroy whatsoever. A static image narrated by a character who doesn't really have much connection to Batman, ending with the words, thank you, Kevin. That is it. Aside from the fact that it should have been Commissioner Gordon reading that out, the rather dubiously scabbed on memorial note to the deceased voice of Batman was one final injustice from the game, putting the nail in the coffin of a great game franchise. In the end, the game hasn't done anything other than kill one of the last good DC properties. It's weird, and I don't know what they're planning on doing with this from this point on. There's a cope theory going on out there about how the game doesn't feature the actual Justice League, and that the ones you kill are merely doppelgangers. But we'll never know, even if it is implemented, whether this was truly the intention of the game or not, because it would be too easy for Rocksteady to pretend it was intentional, even if it was something they just tacked on afterwards. The insult to the character of Batman, the epitome of the ideal male fantasy of stopping a crime and saving the day with your own might and skill, has been a consistent thing for a long time now. From taking jabs at his self-sacrificing crusade to bring the corruption in Gotham to light, to stripping him of money and pride and having his own team betray him in favor of a group of thieves led by one of the many members of his rogues gallery, there has been no end of disdain pointed at the caped crusader. Insults pointed at the very concept of Batman, jokes about how he's a rich white man who runs around beating up the mentally ill, or about how his villains are actually the heroes, are more common than ever. And the worst part of this is that it's all clearly ideologically driven. Take the issue of the Bat family siding with Selina Kyle's henchmen union. They refuse to stop crime because it's poor people stealing from the rich, as if that justifies theft and crime ever. It was a clear criticism of tough on crime policies. Or how about how Batman was told that giving his wealth away would do more good than fighting crime. As if Bruce going out every night, risking his life for people he'd never know, handling criminal psychopaths too dangerous for the city's resources to handle, and solving crimes out of his own free will, wasn't doing anything. The truth is that these people handling the story of Batman don't actually like Batman. They never did. They've only ever seen him as an oppressor because of all the boxes he ticks off. But nothing will ever change my opinion that Batman is the greatest fictional character ever. But I don't really have much faith in the brand of DC anymore.